So here's the dealio. You really wanted this video insert snapshot of all the comments here um, of the portfolio vid that I uh, suggested portfolio video um, and basically I kind of wanted to do it um, by the way disclaimer this is not a show you off video you'll see by my work anyway there's nothing to show off but um, it's just basically kind of like an information video because when I was um, like during my leaving start during my exams in school or high school for some V um, if you're going to kind of art school it's really hard to know what to put into your portfolio and things like that um, I know I didn't have a clue and I was looking at YouTube videos constantly um, but the one thing I noticed was it was either a video showing the work or it was a video talking about the work and there was no videos of two of them really together I did see a few ones that had lecturers from colleges I put together but none of them were fashion directed and I just thought it would be nice for me to upload this seeing as I'm flying for fashion design and um, my number one choice is Belfast in the United Kingdom um, and that's north of Ireland if you don't know um, so that is what I'm applying for so basically um, I'm going to show you the work that I had prepared to apply to that college um, I'm currently studying a one year art and design course uh, where I live and it's a very intense course it's more intense than some like your basic foundation year course from what I've heard it's a bit more of an intense one like the tutors are extremely good and I'm very thankful for that because I didn't do art a for my exams at all I never studied art before and um, so basically I just took this year out to do that and obviously learn as much as I can improve my skills and put together a good portfolio for fashion design. Um, when we first entered we were told to pick a theme. Um, I picked the natural environment which eventually turned into doing animal skulls which is a really popular um, topic but it was something about it I was interested in. I'm not like a weirdo or anything but I just thought there was a lot that I could get from it so my portfolio was based around taking the skull and changing it into different kind of designs and different forms and basically just take something that was very like in a very obvious topic and putting my own spin on it so that's what my portfolio is about there's a slight fine art side to it and then there's a very textile abstract side to my portfolio so um, there's a lot of different directions and there's basically a fashion spin on most of the work especially for my subjects like combined materials, sculpture, um, design and things like that and then obviously I do painting and drawing and art appreciation and all those kind of ones. So they're kind of like um, a quick showing you of what subjects I do and basically I'm going to talk you through my portfolio and my sketchbook and um, kind of give you a guide on how the sketchbook is supposed to be used. Now everybody's portfolio and sketchbook is going to be really really different so don't think you have to go away if you want fashion and do my portfolio. You don't. If your um, whole portfolio is like fine art based that's fine. Um, fashion design tutors still want to see that when they're assessing your portfolio. It's just for me personally I kind of put um, what I enjoyed into my portfolio so that's something I want to stress. The talking, let's go straight into the portfolio. Okay so this is my sketchbook which is an A3 size one and on in the inside of the first page I just paper clipped in my artist statement if you don't know what that is go look it up. It's basically, uh, basically just an outline of my work, the kind of materials I like to use and what subject I'll be focusing on and what I'm trying to do with my work. Um, here was just some early compositional studies in ink um, that had nothing to do with the skull. Um, this is some work I went back and redid once I knew I was doing the skull. It's just like some colour and um, very ugly colour might I add and kind of texture, uh, colour studies and stuff and here we just have some like paint swatches and then you have to go try and mix that colour just a colour study exercise again. Again um, the same image with collaging different colours um, then here like this is like the first example of a research page that I did once I was doing the skulls I wanted to do painting and um, so an artist that I looked up who's really really good with colour and also she kind of specialises in skulls in some of her work is Georgia O'Keeffe um, she's a really famous artist and basically it's nice to have these little research pages throughout your sketchbook just to show that you've 
um, that you research what you're doing and then you're not jumping straight into it without doing any study. So here I've just put in some of her work, um, examples of how she uses colour even if it's not to do with the skull um, and it kind of, her paintings like this one kind of reflects what I'm trying to do throughout my portfolio is kind of teaming the skull um, which is very generally ugly with something kind of um, pretty and colourful and light. Here I just have some thumbnails I did of the skull and um, just rearranging elements. At this stage I was very interested at the teeth and then this went into something I did for printmaking uh, later on. Uh, here I'm just rearranging the teeth again and again you can see the whole pretty ugly kind of theme. It's a really kind of manky old jaw but it's made into like pretty flower. Um, and here I'm just putting in a small bit of research of a textile artist called Timorous Beasties and they kind of use very um, like bugs and plants and stuff in their in their work so um, here I've kind of started to repeat them so these repeats kind of relate back to the research I was doing. Uh, here I just kind of put a little fashion page in. For me uh, throughout my portfolio it's kind of relating everything back to fashion in some way or form. So this is just like a fun little thing I did where the, uh, the, skull, the, the teeth were supposed to be like a skirt and here I'm just looking at how to repeat the little flower things I did. So that was just a little fun little page. Um, here is something that I used in printmaking again, rearranging the, the teeth into kind of this big picture thingy um, that looked quite rough but it was actually a piece that went into printmaking and I'll show you that later. Um, here was the start of my combined materials class and um, it's pretty much like a textiles class where you use fabric and stuff and sewing and stitching and wire work and stuff. Um, so this is just like some exercises we did on texture and whatnot. Um, nice, they like to see kind of a little bit of experimentation just even if you know how to do it it's nice to put it in so they know that you know how to do it too. Uh, this is just messing around with wax and inks and um, just carving it out of the wax, some collages. This is another experimental page just with bleach, ink, salts, PVA and fabric, just different surfaces that we could make um, involving inks and bleach and stuff. Um, this was a random page, it was again to do going towards a finished piece for project one in my combined materials class. Um, it was looking at like a shirt and just putting little skull motifs on it and stuff. This is all bleach and ink and crayons and ink and stuff um, and creating resists on the page. Um, this was like an applique version of the previous one where I applique or sewed on little pieces of kind of textured paper and you know um, again just reflecting the kind of pretty ugly this is a very kind of um, solid metal print and stuff um, and it's just basically just some fun I'm just stitching into it showing that I've been looking at different stitches um, this was the beginning of wire work before we ever did wire basically just looking at the different kind of textures you can make using wire and then I just have like a little messy little shirt in the corner uh, these were just some thumbnails. I always kind of do thumbnails every now and again, uh, although I'm not really a thumbnail -y person. I like to do it like on the page of my finished work. But this, these were thumbnails um, that were going into my project one, which I'll just be showing you in a second. And I was basically taking the shapes from the skull and resizing them, rearranging them, joining different parts together, um, and creating these little mixed vignettes. Again, just looking at the shirt, I did this little pocket yoke that kind of reflected some of the teeth. Uh, I just used kind of coat cans for those. Um, here again, I have another kind of skull page. My research here, I have a little Terry Muggler um, inspiration. Um, I have kind of a faint outline of the skull and then I change the shape a bit, how I change into a kind of a skirt. Here I have a kind of um, a very crazy looking dress design with um like with the very protruded shoulders and then I was looking at David Coma who's a designer who uses 
very kind of rough shoulders and very edgy kind of designs so I put his work in and I also put some Balmain up there as well and then I just did this fun little kind of a butterfly painting you know those ones you just fold in half and the paint kind of transfers to the side I just thought it was fun because the skull is quite symmetrical and I wanted to emphasize um, the symmetricalness of it if that's even a word and again always in pushing your notes as you go along here was just a actual literal piece that I done with the previous design here um, I just wanted to test it out and see how it came out just for um, reference and just to experiment a little bit uh, this is a leatherette here felt material and then I painted on to plain fabric with the yellow um, here is actually one of the things I got the most work out of. This was the underside of the skull. So if you turn the skull upside down and look at the teeth, this is what that was. It was just a collage studying on the colour and the shadows that I saw inside the skull and what colours were reflecting off of it. Um, so this was just all little scraps of paper all um, stuck on. And then I did a colour study of it for to go into a big painting, which you'll see later. But then I really liked something about this I just wanted to take it on further so I just did a little thumbnail here and I started copying the shape like that's a quite a literal copy but this one is more exaggerated as you can see I really exaggerated the shapes and made it quite um I don't know I don't know what the word is nicer I don't know but then I inputted autumn winter colours these colours were seen a lot last um, to the, autumn winter 2011 this was that posing so what I did was I took this and I inputted a fashion spin on it so I'm putting autumn winter colours in these designs then I took this design and did a little fashion sketch of how I would translate that directly into fashion um, and I'm actually take I took this out of the sketchbook as well um, then I was playing with repeat patterns again with the autumn winter colours and um, I have a little research of Stella McCartney she used a lot of repeat prints um, last autumn winter as well um, just playing with that shape I really like that shape for some reason kind of reminds me of Batman or something um, but this is just lace over felt and then I sewed on uh, or appliqued these little leatherette bits um, that I think actually came out quite well here I just directly sewed on to the leatherette freehand I didn't use this using any automatic or a computerised um, stitcher then I was repeating it in a different kind of unexpected way I started rounding them and um, basically taking them and creating it into the circle shape so I took this into a painting, my swatches are all down here before I decided to paint it in and then here is my research of how I actually went about doing the finished big painting of this. Um, here I'm also doing a little bit of research into um, artists that play with perspective because I wanted to this painting to really play with perspective and colour studies. So I've got Beatrice Milhazy here. I've got Tama Abst here, just artists that all play with um, perspective. Uh, here I actually kaleidoscoped the image um, and just made a background to complement the colours again using your colour wheel and your colour star um, instead of just like a black background. And here I just, this is watercolour pencil and I just had a bit of fun changing up the colours just to see what it would look like. Again, including my swatches. This was actually. Um, one of the transfer prints that I did. Luckily we had a transfer press in or which is basically just a big heat press to transfer dyes onto fabric so I managed to get my designs and actually put them on fabric um, using inks and photocopies and stuff which was really fun. This was just one that had no home and nowhere to go so I put them in here um, and again this was just some of the scrap paper that was left behind afterwards. Um, here you might have seen this dress earlier on in the sketchbook, it's basically um, me just kind of um, researching it further. I'm doing a little bit of research here into people that do like wire dresses and wire work, wire artists. So here I have some Fanny Schiavone, she's absolutely brilliant if you're into that kind of stuff. She also did this, you probably recognise this from some fashion magazines. So basically I wanted to do fabric and wire piece. This is all going to be wire and this is all fabric and whatnot. Have some swatches here with some washers sewn on, some possible wire techniques. Um, here I've actually recorded the process of me making this. 
um, just have it from the very start from when I was pinning it to after it was sewn to sewing all the other bits on I have the kind of wire outline here but it's not finished yet a little back sleeve this is the back panel uh, obviously the space because it's not finished yet here was a sculpture piece that I started some colour still needs to go in there but it's just you know my basic sculpture and um, I'm basically combining my sculpture with some combined materials as you'll see in a second this is um, just some research into possible surfaces for my sculpture which is made out of steel by the way this is it from the very start and then this is me starting to curve it and then it's starting to go up into construction and um, it's not finished yet but I did lay down the fabric just to kind of see what it would look like so I just have fabric on one edge of both my sculptures and that was pretty much my sketchbook I just threw that in there last minute because it just had no home one of my um, mini projects for design and um, here is just my design brief and outlining my aims and stuff like that like what I want to do in the project here I have a mood board there's some Alexander McQueen on it some Celia Bertwell uh, Celia Bertwell um, and basically I've just taken off the binding this is binding all these sheets together but I've just taken it off so I can spread the sheets a little better um, so basically what I did was now it goes from newest to oldest you'd think um, sometimes you'd put like the oldest to the newest but I have a lot of painterly work and I didn't want to leave it at the end because sometimes the kind of good stuff that you leave at the end can, can be looked over because when, when you kind of get to the end of a, like a, a mini project or a sketchbook so I like to put the best work at the start um, and the original work at the back so I started with a study of a skull that I did so this was just um, one of the pictures of the skull that I had. I had more but this is the only one I included in this project and what I did was basically took the shapes that I was getting from these um, images and again resizing them, enlarging them. That's the eye with the teeth around it and you know just different patterns and prints and um, basically just seeing what shapes that I could come up with from shapes that I found in the skull and um, then I started looking at like patterns and um, briefly and then I think this is my mood board or uh, my color mood board page I picked a color palette and obviously did the little swatches and started testing out some of the colors what they looked like again combining pretty colors with the harshness of the skull and basically just creating something that doesn't necessarily look like it came from the skull but me knowing myself that it did is the important thing and um, the way the project reads from the original skull drawings to the finished product. These are just some repeat patterns that's what I was working on, repeat patterns that can be that can go into fabric um, and I can go into like swatches for fabric. These were all painted by gouache and it's really really important that you render them really well and don't leave any rough edges anywhere. And then my mood board just went on the top so that was one. Now not everyone did um, a mini project to go with that project but I managed to just have a ton of swatches and samples that I had lying around so um, this was I kind of made a, uh, a mini project too in class to complement the previous one and this one is more like fabric and textile orientated here again I was using the transfer press photocopies and uh, sorry collaging photocopies inking them up and then transferring the dyes over to a piece of fabric uh, so it just kind of gives it the, the start of the project a very moody feel um, here I was trying out um, impressions on the transfer press. This was a piece of leatherette that actually melted onto the blanket. But I think I kind of like the way it looks. It's very textile-y and I just really like it. And here you have the, the flower that you see a lot in my work. And um, that was made out of um, kind of the jaw shape that I saw in the skull. But that was just um, a piece of a mount board that I cut into shape and then laid it on top of the leather before it went into the heat press here I just have some washers this was actually meant to be a pocket for something else but I thought it went with this really really well and um, my textile teacher helped me kind of put some of this together so yeah that was page one of the mini project two here I just have a kind of a quick outline of um, that project I was showing you earlier 
but here was an earlier transfer print that I did again using inks and fold copies of my original piece of art and then uh, inking it up onto fabric so this is actually some um, nylon fabric I think and um, then the shapes that you see here I didn't want to just plonk this on a page on its own so it's actually on a page with something relating to it so here you can see the shape same shape that was circled off so I thought it was nice to kind of put some of the original project on again my uh, combined materials teacher kind of showed me how to do, the, to, the, to do this and I thought it was really really helpful so here I have the piece and then up here it's just showing the same image of how it can be transferred into fashion and just some quick um, pictures of the work I was doing I stitched into this fabric as well you would have seen this design in the previous project so again relating always relating back here I just have the same velvet and I stitched little uh, plique little um, leather flowers onto it the flower kind of shapes that came from the skull so it's nice when things aren't random when they've actually come from a source you know you could draw pretty things all day but if they don't relate to anything it's pointless um, here these were random scrap pieces that all actually ended up kind of correlating together quite well um, again from a textile textile point of view here was just a little shirt that I did with some of the teethy kind of material stitched into this old um, scrap piece from my project one this is actually my project one for design but cut up last minute because my um, teacher really wanted me to put it in and um, this is another stitch piece that I did completely freehand on the sewing machine it took a hell of a long time a couple of hours but it was worth it it's basically just the teeth pattern again um, and this was sewn into leatherette uh, again I have another one of the skull transfers I did with slightly different colours so I have like the kind of um, the pinks that are in here also in the pink stitching down here and the pink button here so they all kind of go together here was another actual scrap piece that I had that I stitched into with red thread last minute um, it was a test piece for the previous leather piece and here I was just using random colours. I actually don't like that colour palette but it was to match this one which was just another skull print that I did that was lying around and had nowhere to go so I said I would do a design um, to go with it. So that was that page. Uh, this was just like a random print I did that I don't like at all but my like text my teachers liked it so they told me to put it in. I did it in printmaking and I'm absolutely crap at printmaking. But then so, um, this is another printmaking piece that I did. Uh, just an inked up page and then like scribbled into, I don't even know how to do it. But it came out pretty good and you would have seen that at the start of my sketchbook. Again, the teeth, the skull, everything's relating. So that was my little mini project too. Now we get on to the actual like proper portfolio stuff. Um, this was a drawing that I did of the skull. Um, pretty detailed um, and I think it came out quite well um, so that was just that so then I have the drawing leading into a painting uh, this is kind of a colour block test painting I did at the start of the year it's probably the first painting I did it's not supposed to be anyway accurate it was just for colour references and whatnot but basically just leading one drawing or painting into another you would have seen this in my sketchbook earlier which I got a lot of work from this was another painting that I did and um, again looking at the different colors and shadows that I found in the skull those colors aren't made up they're just exaggerated and um, here is another drawing I did of the skull which is recent enough as well and took an extremely long time um, this is just a random little study experiment. Uh, they like to see experimentation. I never used chalks before, so I basically just kind of used blue and orange chalks because that was the colour of the shadows that were in the skull. At the time when I was drawing them, it's not a finished drawing. I don't know what this is and I can't believe it made it in there because I don't know, I don't even know why it's in there. It's an unfinished painting. Um, this is another experimental drawing I did of a drawing that had very little tone in it. Um, but what I did was I just added a little bit more tone than it had and then I obviously started experimenting with acrylic inks which are just really watery acrylics. Um, so yeah I was experimenting with that. 
Again, the colours weren't random, they were colours that I saw on the skull. Uh, this is a very ugly, I think, painting of the skull I did. But um, I think you can really feel the fabric in it. Um, so I don't know, I left it in and this is done with acrylic inks as well. So it kind of gives like a slightly watercolored effect. Um, and yeah, so that's that painting. This was another experimentational drawing. Um, it was an old tonal drawing I did of the underside of the skull, but then I had these plastic butterflies. So obviously they don't look any way real, but it's just for color and experimentation again. Um, this was just another old unfinished drawing that I had that has very little tone in it. Uh, this was a painting for a design that I did and basically I was looking at my colour theory. So I was picking ready blacks and ready browns to complement the green and the blues and push those colours out further rather than just using black as a background because black doesn't really do much for any colour. So, um, and then this was one of the paintings that I did. Um, that like edge is intentional, <laughs> um, it's a long story but basically I started learning more that black backgrounds is not what you want, you want these kind of nice multi-tonal blacks in the back to bring out the stronger colours and bring these forward and then kind of bring the outer ring back. Um, but I just kind of like the black as a background and this kind of messy edge, I kind of liked it as when I tore off the masking tape. Um, but yeah, so basically if you want the middle to be the strongest, it has the the colours in the middle have to be the purest and then the outer ring I want it to push back a little bit so those colours are a little bit more dull down, like the blue is duller than this blue and whatnot and um, there's a couple of little different um, multi-tonal um, stripes kind of like here just to see what it would look like if it was a painting on fabric just to show that it's um, it wasn't a painting meant for a flat surface, it was, it was meant to be on something and that's just a reference to the light hitting it, if that makes any sense to anyone, which probably doesn't. And now we're on to the last bit of my portfolio, which I think is the last bit of my portfolio, which is my life drawings. Um, they're okay, I've never done a life drawing before. Well I did, but I was terribly bad at it. Um, I did it in this like really short course that I did, but um, I, I did improve a lot during the year. These are more recent ones, the ones I had at the start were absolutely awful. But basically um, what I learned in life drawing is that it's not how realistic you make the figure um, like in terms of his face and stuff like that. It's not about getting him perfect, it's about getting the proportions right and making a world around him that's believable in the words of our teacher, a world that you can step into, like that you can, looks like a picture that you can walk into and that the, the thing that's closest to you in the picture looks like you can walk into it. So um, yeah, that's just my interpretation of it and it was definitely, like drawing is definitely something I hugely improved in towards the end of the year. A lot of these are unfinished, this is an unfinished one but again, um, his proportions were the main thing. Uh, this is an unfinished one as well, again, proportions, main thing. Um, unfinished as well, um, just kind of more of a tonal one that was going on there but again, not finished. This is a finished one that I did. Again, there's a lot of a chaos in the background, which did take ages to draw, but it's worth it and it makes the picture very believable, I think. Um, another one of um, our lovely model that we had on Mondays. And then that's just a random one of my dad that I did, kind of only when I started to understand life drawing a bit better and I added about seven stone onto him, which he was very pleased about. And that's just another, uh, very very early one of our male model for life drawing as you can see um my drawings improved a lot from like here then you know onto my earlier ones so um i definitely improved a lot in that and that is my portfolio and um, it's not all of my portfolio i still have work left in school but um, the main thing to put into your portfolio is the stuff that makes sense there's no point putting like like flowers in this portfolio that I did because um, like there's like it has nothing to do with the skull so you can leave them out. Basically your portfolio has to look like one big project and um, 
now that was just what I did because the whole year was about me focusing on my theme. It's not going to be like that for everyone because I understand like some of you are like in Leaving Cert and in school so not everything is going to be um, themed. It's going to be kind of whatever the curriculum is like but this is how I did it during my foundation year. And, um, so yeah guys, I hope that helped and I hope you um, have gotten some kind of insight about how I did my portfolio. Like I said before, everyone's portfolio is different so please don't feel like it has to be like mine or hopefully that mine is wrong. Look, I know it's different but it's what my tutors um, kind of wanted to drag out of me and they did. So like I said, everyone's is different so please don't judge and yeah, I hope this helped. Bye guys! <laughs>